into the bell work. And uh, that's starting out with uh, your objective for today. So we know that we've been working on our South City project, so now we're kind of digging a little deeper. And I told y'all we'd focus more on the plasma membrane and transport. Okay, so this is our objective for today, the one you wrote in your bell work. Um, and just I want you to remember that we talked about before, see, it's comparing active and passive site with transport. So by the time you leave today, we should have a great idea about the differences and commonalities between active and passive transport. All right, but to be able to compare, first we've got to be able to identify and describe those key characteristics of each one. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And that's our ultimate goal. That's our objective. All right, so shake your head if you kind of understand why we're headed that way. Okay, good. So I'm going to go over bell work today. It's one of our favorite things. All right, we're going to do a little stand up, hand up, <coughs> pair up. Okay, stand up, hand up, pair up. So let's get Jamar. Jamar, show us again in case we kind of forgot about how we do it. Show us how we stand up, we put our hand up, and we pair up. Stand up. Hand up, and what you looking for? Okay, Seth, you do the same. Seth can stand up, hand up. They see each other, and they're going to boom, high five. And then we're going to do what? Discuss what we're doing. All right, so y'all take a seat. So what we're going to be discussing is going back to our bell work. Okay, about <coughs> what we remember the cell membrane is, and how do we think that it accomplishes its job? All right, and I want you to make some connections between some real life scenarios and your actually sell city project. Right. So remember, do we necessarily want to say the same thing as the other person? No. Okay. We don't want to come up with something new, something exciting. Talk about those scenarios. All right. The goal today is we're going to mingle with five people. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. So I guess you kind of uh, going through, you get in the plane, you got to step through the metal detector, it lets some people in, some people out. Yeah, I see what you're saying. All right, Zach, last one. What's something that you uh, that you heard? 
I heard that it was like almost uh, a ticket booth or a toll uh, a toll booth. You have to pay to get in, and if you can't afford it or you have something on you that you're not supposed to, you're not allowed in. Okay, good. So what I like about that answer is that he said you have to pay to get in, right? Who heard that also? You got to pay to get in, right? What we're going to talk about today is how the plasma membrane accomplishes its job. So how does it let things in and out? There's going to be two big ways that we talk about, okay, going back to our objective, and those are going to be active and passive cellular transport. And I like the payment method because I want you to think about that because I want to come back to it at the end. Because it's all going to kind of make sense to you. Well, what do you mean payment? All right, so that's a very good answer. Right now, everybody. define that, there's going to be some specific rules we're going to follow and specific things we're going to do that's going to help us going to take life change, right? You remember, if there's a word you don't know, you circle it. Something you think is important, you underline it. If you have a question, you put the question mark next to it. And if you have the, uh, if you see that boom statement, that most of, that one statement, the most important, go into a temporary green zone, right? If you don't have a smart device, tablet, cell phone, then in a second when everybody gets started, I want you to run, grab me an iPad, and have it ready for you to use. Okay? I'm going to give us a 10 minute timer. Ready, set, go. Yes. to todaysmeet.com. I see some great work going on. Remember, we want what we think is that overall most important <coughs> statement from the article. Okay, remember, it's slash transports. Okay? Slash transports.
minute. Let's get our statements up there. See some good ones up there, guys. I see a lot of diversity. That's, that's fantastic. Is wrapped up. Once you have your answer, do me a favor cell phone slash smart device off, get it put to the side. Cell phone slash smart device, so get it turned off. Put it to the side, out of reach, out of sight, out of mind. And whenever you're done, stand up, please. Whenever you got it completed, stand up. All right, very good. Everybody take a seat. I saw a lot of diversity. Real quick, okay? Now, remember, the great thing about this is it's completely anonymous, right? So you use it on one answer, you can put it on here. Nobody knows who the beast is. Okay, I mean, like I said, a couple of y'all that might resemble a beast, but <coughs> no one actually named beast. Okay, now, uh, diffusion is the simplest and most common form of passive transport. Okay, who remembers reading about this? All right, obviously, yes, very important. Uh, Active transport is kind of transport that requires the cell to work against the natural direction of diffusion. Whew. That's a mouthful, okay? Very important again. Passive transport is the easiest for the cells because they don't need to use any energy. All right, who remembers reading that? No energy for passive transport. Okay, good. That's going to be a big uh, overarching theme about that whenever we compare active and passive transport. All right, let's see what else. A couple of more. Areas with high concentrations of materials, slowly diffuse them to areas of concentration of material. Okay, again, great. I saw a couple of people when I was walking around that actually uh, circled diffusion. Okay, who circled diffusion on your paper? No, oh, honestly. Okay, Joy? No? Okay. All right, so then that means we all know what diffusion means, right? Okay, be honest. All right, no problem. Make fun of you. Okay. We're going to learn about diffusion. That's going to be a big type of passive transport as we keep going. Okay. So any questions about this before we move on? <coughs> Again, guys, great work. Great work. All right, so let's move on to the next part. Everybody look at the other sheet that I have for you at your station. Ready? Everybody should take one of those, and everybody needs a questioning uh, sheet. Okay, five seconds. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. And one. All right, so this is what the worksheet looks like. Raise your hand if you have this. Everybody should. Okay. Very good. So what we're going to be working on next, and it's going to be used for the next two parts of our lesson, our guided practice and our independent practice. So first, for the guided practice, you're going to be creating some questions. Now, not just any type of questions. Questions that relates specifically to our objective and the article we just read. All, right. All we're creating is two questions. One, two. One level two and one level three. Again, remember the purpose is to achieve the overall objective. 
That's what we want to work toward. This lesson is not about creating questions. It's about achieving our objective. All right? So make sure when you and your group members combine minds that you're looking for the best possible question to create about what is going to have an end result with our objective. All right? So tough hands one if you understand that. Ready? Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Ready on three. One, two, three. All right, so does anybody have a question about what we're going to be doing? And so on the post-it note, one post-it note level two, one post-it note level three. Okay, combine minds. Now, when you get started, I know, cool, look how anxious. You're ready to go. Okay, we're ready to go in this group. Yeah, that's fantastic. We're going to put them over here. So once you're done, we're going to post level two here and level three here. Then we're going to come sit back down. Then we're going to get up, when I say to go, and we're going to pick a different group's questions. We're going to be answering other group's questions that some other student created. Okay? Any questions? Last thing. Last thing. Whenever we write a question, what do we need? A question mark. A question mark. Oh, you know what? I can't say you're wrong, man. You do need a question mark. Absolutely. But what else? When we in Coach Hill's class, we writing questions. We also writing answers. Answers. Incomplete sentences. Thank you very much, Shanna. Answers incomplete sentences. All right. So where I want you to write the answer to your question is on the back. Okay. Is on the back of the page. When you go pick up your post-it note, you see where it says question one, answer one with evidence. <coughs> question two, answer two with evidence. That's where I want you to write them. Right? So everybody's going to be writing this and everybody's going to be turning this in, so I'll make sure you're on track. Right? Now, we've talked about it before. Evidence. Jamari, what's evidence? Proof. Explanation. So you're going to read these questions that you're going to get, and you're going to actually go into the article and find evidence that supports your answer. Okay? I know there's a lot of explanations there. Y'all are big boys and big girls, and I know that we're going to knock this out the park. Okay? You have five minutes to create two questions and answers. Ready? Set? Go for it. Good guys, make sure you're writing the questions you created uh, on the back of that worksheet. Yeah. What I want you to do, one person from each group, you're going to get up, go grab a question. That's not yours. Now on the worksheet, you're going to write that question in. See where it says question one and question two. Then I'm going to want you to go into the article and find your evidence for that answer. And tell me why. Okay, I'm giving you three minutes. Ready, set, go. Yep, one from each category. <coughs>
Now, Seth, read me your question one along with your answer and the evidence that you have for it. How is diffusion related to active transport? Active transport works against diffusion. I know this because the passage says this kind of transport requires a cell to work against the natural direction of diffusion. Okay, good. Who wrote this question? Okay. Uh, hey, Joanna, tell me why you thought that was an appropriate question in relation to uh, the objective. Okay, good. So it kind of describes what active transport is, and we talked about how they have to relate to objective and identify describe. Okay, good. Uh, Kayla, read me question two that you have, and what's your answer and evidence? Based on what you know, how would you explain active transport? Active transport is used when the concentration of materials inside the cell is high, and the cell needs to push materials out. Okay, so you pulled it directly from paragraph two uh, from the article. Okay, good. Who wrote this question? Okay, Angel, why did you think that was an appropriate question? Or probably the best question you could have written about that. Because it's like straight definition, and we didn't know what it was until we read some. Okay, so you all right, good. So you didn't know what it was until you read the passage, and you thought that obviously fit perfectly with what we were doing. Okay, good. Everybody, give yourself a round of applause, please. Move on to independent practice part of the bottom. Uh, we're just going to go over these real quick. Okay? Uh, we're going to start with question number one. All I want you to do is write the answer, and when you're done, raise your hand, please. Let me know that you're done. All right? So, question number one. Different substances enter and leave the cell using different transportation methods. Which statement explains one way that active <coughs> transport differs from passive transport? Is it A, active transport can move substances from outside the cell to inside? B, active transport requires less energy to move substances through the cell membrane? Is it C, active transport can move substances from areas of low concentration to high concentration? Or is it D, active transport occurs without ATP or energy? Okay, let's get 10 seconds. Think about it, record your answer. You don't have to write the whole answer, just write the letter. 10 seconds. Think about it. I know this is a big, big bite, but just think about it real quick. Okay. Three seconds. You put your pencil down, head up. Three, two, one. Okay. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you thought it was A. The difference. Active transport can move substances from outside the cell to inside. Why wouldn't this be correct? Because they both do. Very good, Joe. They both do it, so there wouldn't be a difference we have here. Okay? Active transport requires less energy. Just from that statement, you should know what? That's wrong. That's wrong. Why, Andrews? Because passive doesn't use any energy at all. Very good. Passive uses no <coughs> energy. All right? C. Active transport can move substances from low to high concentration. Who put C? No way. No way we all put C. Give yourself a round of applause. Good job, guys. Guys, that's great work, okay, because that's a tough statement to kind of figure out on day one of this whole process, all right? So very good. Why wouldn't we put D? Because ATP is energy. Exactly, because ATP is energy, okay? We kind of run out of time, guys, so let's look at this one real quick, okay? I want you to look at this stimulus where it says question three. I want you to write it just real quick. Using the stimulus to the left. Which one, A, B, or C, is an example of active transport? And tell me why, based on what the article tells you. Ready, set, <coughs> go. Pencil down, hands up. I keep saying hands up, hands up. Okay. Um, is it A? 
Why? Exactly, it's diffusion. Is it B? No. What lets you know that C is the correct answer? Boom, look at that. It even tells you, look, oh, look at me. I'm important, right here. ATP, energy, active transport. Good job. Guys, on your note card, let's get the science law again. I want you to compare active and passive transformer on your note card. You got one minute. One minute. Yep, on your note card. Prepare active and passive transport on your note card. And make sure you write your name at the bottom because this also has the name uh, that you use for today's meet. So I kind of know both ways. At least one paragraph. 